recent Q&A, Dr. Michael Greger shared a study about caffeine I hadn't heard about before, and he commented that, quote, this raises potential concern. It feels like the jury was out on how healthy caffeine actually is for us. Having said that, the following studies have found that drinking between three to five cups of coffee per day or more than three cups of tea per day may reduce the risk of brain diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's by between 28 to 60 percent. It was thought, though, as long as you don't drink caffeine in the evening, it wouldn't affect your sleep. But 400 milligrams, which is roughly four cups of coffee worth, even six hours before bedtime can reduce total sleep time by more than one hour. Caffeine has also been found to reduce the amount of time spent in stages one and two and can increase the amount of time you wake up during sleep. But it's this next study that potentially raises the most concern. So let's hear now from Dr. Greger of nutritionfacts.org. What's the latest time you should have caffeine? Oh, that's a good question. It depends in part on how fast you metabolize caffeine, which is in part genetically determined. I've got a video on this. Uh, I forget the specifics. I think it, traditionally it's like four hours before bedtime. Um, that's usually, uh, in most people, you can metabolize caffeine. But there was a study that showed that even drinking caffeine in the morning, which is what most people do, and not having caffeine the rest of the day, I don't think it affects actually um, sleep time, uh, which is where you, you know, if you give someone coffee before bedtime, they actually uh, sleep significantly less. So it didn't actually affect sleep duration, but it did actually cause EEG changes. And so the brainwave changes at night when you were sleeping are different. If you had coffee in the morning, like 12 hours before, than they did otherwise. Now, does it have any clinical ramifications? Does it mean they slept better or worse? We have no idea. But the fact that it changes brainwaves does raise a potential concern. But in terms of actually interfering with sleep, let's give it four hours. Now, as Dr. Greger said, we don't know if these EEG changes have clinical ramifications or not. And also, this study was from 1995. But what do you think? Do you sleep well if you have caffeine in the day? Or like me, are you trying to decrease your caffeine consumption? Leave a comment below. Wonderfully, the autophagy benefits of coffee are also seen in decaffeinated coffee. We discuss the beverages Dr. Greger drinks every day in this next video.